My name is Monish Patel. I'm a final year student at Kingston University. On a day-to-day -day basis, I encounter many people who smoke cigarettes, either on the occasion or through addiction. What's worrying is that despite all the health risks, health campaigns and causes of death linked to cigarette smoke in the UK, we still do it. As a smoker, I myself have been susceptible to the addictiveness that tobacco has. My self-study will highlight just how much I would smoke over the course of one year. I'll meet people who enjoy the odd cigarette here and there, and also those who are absolutely against it. Coming into uni and everything, uh, never thought about quitting because I never thought I'm going to be a proper smoker. I only smoke when I'm out with my friends having a drink or so. I'll also find out what happens when a loved one is lost through the harmful effects of smoking. It doesn't register into your mind yet, you know, it's because of smoking or anything like that. During the course of my first year at university, I decided to undertake a personal study which reflected the amount of cigarettes that I would consume in the space of 12 months. I, think she's good for me, that's why I, leave. I kept all my 10 and 20 deck cigarette packets. The results were astounding and gave me a much needed reality check into what I was doing to myself. Though I have cut down, I still find it increasingly difficult to not smoke, especially when I'm consuming alcohol. To me, the two go perfectly hand in hand together. Sometimes I think to myself, where did it all begin? How did I become addicted to cigarettes? Where does it all start? I think I started when I was 10. Had my first few uh, cigarettes then. Just like, because it's cool, isn't it? It was a youthful, youthful independence thing. I think everyone wants to try, try uh, something new and I think I sort of fell into that. No, not in my life, because I don't like the smell and also I think it's bad for me. I have never never felt to smoke a cigarette Every time I went out, I probably had about 10, and that's when I started getting addicted. I've never been the heaviest smoker in my life. Um, I only smoke when I'm out with my friends and stuff, so yeah, I don't really feel the need to um, smoke when I'm on my own, just when I'm having a drink or so. I didn't think I was a heavy smoker back then, but I do accept it now. Despite several health warnings and endless internet articles, it's shocking to see how many smokers are still amongst us. Recently, the government have launched a smoke-free stop smoking campaign intended to shock people and to inform them of the dangers that are inevitable through cigarette smoke. About 100,000 people in the UK die each year due to smoking and it's understood that only 5 out of 10 long-term smokers live past the age of 70. From a personal experience, it's interesting to note how well cigarettes and alcohol seem to go together. I didn't find there was that much benefits from it apart from possibly when drinking I think that's the only side of things when it's, it seems to benefit me anyway. Well, I guess all the bad habits go together. That's why alcohol and smoking go together. Um, and plus, smoking gives me a boost when I'm drinking and I find it, so it just makes me feel relaxed. I do have the occasional one or two cigarettes yeah. a year. It's part of like a social thing. When I get stressed, it's having a fact or so. Um, release my stress and um, yeah, I think casual smoking is much better than heavy smoking because heavy smoking really gets inside your body and you start going weak. It is understood that smoking causes about 90% of lung cancer. It also causes cancer in many other parts of the body, such as the mouth, lips, throat, bladder, kidneys, and liver. When we're around people that smoke, how does it really make us feel and affect us? Do we automatically smoke with them? A lot of my friends do smoke around me, but I can't read. Really, I do tell them to stop, but generally they don't, so I just live with it. I don't think it's separated me from my friends in any way. Um, they are pretty understanding. A couple of my housemates who I live with, they smoke indoors. Um, so I mean, I haven't got a major issue with it, but I mean, I don't like it from eating, and like, if, it gets, if it gets too much, I'll just ask them to step outside and they, they don't really mind. It's just something that I just wouldn't personally do, so I don't really like nervous. If you're a part of a social group, that's just a normal thing. There will be non smokers in this group. We don't actually think about quitting until we actually try to. I 
did quit after a few months. Um, well, I did, when I did start off again, when like, coming into uni and everything, I uh, never thought about quitting because I never thought I'm going to be a proper smoker. To begin with, it's actually quite difficult, depending on how many you smoke a day and stuff. It was really difficult, obviously, in the first week because I have a lot of friends and a lot of family who smoke. And also at work, they always smoke around me, so the smell of it was really hard to get over. But I tried to keep myself occupied by doing different things, like chewing, chewing gum. That was a good way to do it. Oh yeah, I definitely still get cravings, um, especially like when I pass someone and I just get like a little whip. The way I subsided that uh, whole you know, uh, dealt with the cravings was uh, like always eating, like keeping my hands busy. Um, so you know, stuff like crisp, chocolate, you know, the usual stuff. I quit about six months ago, so it was sort of difficult during that time because you had New Year's Eve, you had lots of birthdays, my birthday, and usually during these times you get to socialise with people, they go outside, they have a cigarette, and it was so difficult to not go outside and just stay inside with my little wine glass and think that was enough. I think the main reason was just the realisation that I want to make a change in my life and I think it was more of my own decision to stop. Statistically, one cigarette takes off 10 minutes of a person's life. Is it all worth it? All that money, all the dangers your body goes through, just for a momentary nicotine hit? When I wake up, I don't feel like I need a Ziggy, but it's, it's right after breakfast. I think every meal when I have one, um, I feel like I need a Ziggy. Right after the zig, uh, I'll ride after the meals, and then when I'm out before a long drive, when I'm on a long drive, probably like jump out and then have another ziggy. You know, you always think about uh, wanting to smoke and stuff, but progressively it got easier. It's very difficult in the first stages of it because you're very used to smoking at certain points when you smoke a lot. So like. When I drive to work, I usually have a cigarette on the way. When I get to work, I have a cigarette before I start my shift. So it was difficult to get through these phases without having to smoke because you're driving and it's just a natural thing to do. Before this documentary, I thought smoking was just something I do to pass time and because I somewhat enjoy a cigarette here and there. Somewhere along the line, however, it all adds up. To be fair, I wish I never started. I think uh, those 50, 20 I'm spending right now a week probably could be spending some, on something else. Well, I've been doing it for about past five years, so I think having that casual cigarette here and there is kind of gives me a little boost, but I think smoking in general is a bad habit, very bad habit. I think it's for everyone, it's just their own kind of realisation, and if they want to do it. I don't think that anyone just quits without wanting to. And uh, it just like begins with a decision, I guess, about yourself and your body. Obviously, not smoking has a positive effect on you. So it, it just depends on how a person looks at them, like how much they care about their inner health. What I would say to uh, people that smoke a lot is, uh, is that you know um, you're putting your life at risk. Um, and it's not the answer to, you know, for whatever reason to smoke, you know, it be it stress or whatever. You need to have a goal at the end of the day. You need to, if you just want to quit because you want to quit, I don't think it's, it's going to do anything. You're not going to be able to achieve it. You need to, you need to have a, a goal to reach. Like, you need to be doing it for a reason. Because I think too many, too many of my friends know to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to quit smoking at the end of the weekend. But they never actually do it. Like, within a couple of days, they'll have a cheeky cigarette and, and that'll be it and then I'll be smoking again. So I think having a solid goal is the fundamental issue if you want to quit. To stop people from smoking, I think the best thing to do is stop selling cigarettes because you put them on display, people tend to um, drag attention to it. I do kind of regret it now, so I wish I could stop it. But I'm just thinking I'm going to finish my uni in like June time, probably going to go on another holiday. So I probably have to smoke like during that time. So I might just like give up right after that. So it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. I'm just thinking like maybe maybe 2014 when it starts like New Year's resolution or something, I might just give it up. Year after year, someone loses a loved one through the causes of cancer linked to cigarette smoking. I went to talk to a friend of mine who was affected by a death in his family through smoking. 
as a result of his death, you feel compelled to stop because you've, you've seen what could happen to yourself. Um, but after a month, I couldn't stop. I, I tried it for three days, but I catch myself smoking again. Hunayn's uncle Nazir was diagnosed with lung cancer. He died at the age of 52. Once you've realised why you smoke, it's much easier to um, quit or reduce smoking. Because smoking is quite subjective and everyone has their own reasons. And mine was, it was, it was a brilliant way of escaping from what was going around, around me. Um, no matter what you do, any addiction does have negative impacts. That, that's for definite. Um, so what I, I guess I had to realise why I smoked. And I do wish, um, you know, I, I started smoking when I was 20 or 19. So it wasn't, it wasn't peer pressure or trying to be cool or anything. Um, but I wish I hadn't started smoking. The most important thing is it, it's realising the fact you're addicted to smoking and doing something about it. It was scary to see that despite a family member dying through cigarette smoke, her name still found it hard to quit. It became apparent to me that despite being around smokers in a group, there are individuals that choose plainly not to smoke. I'm not a fitness fanatic or anything, but I like to keep in shape, I like to eat healthy, and I think it doesn't really, uh, it's like the juice isn't worth the squeeze in that way, I think. I mean, I don't get that much benefits from it. All it's going to do is have health implications, and I think, yeah, it's not really worth it. I see the difference in myself, because I'm quite into sports as well. And when I used to be a heavy smoker and did sports, I didn't really have the stamina. I was running out of breath, but now I don't really see much of a difference compared to a normal person that don't smoke. There are activities, well I'm quite busy because I'm busy with uni, I like to go shopping and also I like dancing and music so I have a lot of things to do. I don't really think about smoking or I know a lot of people do smoke because of stress and everything but I guess I, I choose to take something else. I could dance instead of smoking. I actually joined a, uh, a salsa class uh, one of my friends was a good salsa dancer and uh, he you know, tagged me along and um, I quite enjoyed it. Boxing and Zimba and running and all sorts of things. Uh, I think smoking was just a result of my stress. So I tend to get very stressed out when work is concerned and family issues, you name it, anything. And all of those issues are ongoing throughout the year. So I needed something. So I just started running, started training, and it helps, it really helps. It's a better way to get your anger out, and I don't feel so crap after doing it, so I feel better than smoking. I have two jobs on the weekends, so balancing two jobs, and playing salsa, and kickboxing, and gym, and university in the week, you know, so it kind of keeps you quite busy, so yeah, I think since, and I wouldn't have been able to do any of these things before, um, you know, I when I used to smoke, um, okay, just kind of set in that mindset on I think I got so much of my energy back and um, of course I topped it up with like more like healthier eating and exercising and it's just been really great and just seeing like how far I've come from smoking a lot to where I am now I don't think I'll ever pick it up again it's funny to think that I could quit anytime I want I mean, there's so much temptation, so much distraction around in my life that hasn't allowed me to quit. But just listening to those people, just interviewing those people that have actually quit smoking cigarettes, just makes you realise, you know, like, they're living more productive lives, they're living more healthier lives. And it just makes you wonder, why can't I do the same? Why can't other people do the same around the world? Cigarettes is a funny business, you know. Don't want to get there. What I've learned over the past few weeks is that cigarette smoking within the UK is pretty divided in terms of people's perspectives. I myself have had a major wake-up call and need to do something before my habit gets out of hand. I don't have a solution to stop every single person smoking cigarettes. But what I do know, however, it's ultimately our decision to take that leap of faith and just say, I quit.